Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be here. My name is uh, Vasil Sabrakos. I'm a sports uh, journalist. I work as a writer and uh, publishing uh, consultant at uh, Gazeta.gr. And uh, I am also a pundit for uh, Cosmode TV. And uh, together we are going to move on to our next subject, which is uh, the topic sports agent keys, skills and uh, responsibilities. And uh, uh, together with us, let's welcome him, uh, Mr. Pascalis Tuduris. He's the founder and the CEO of uh, ProSport, a leading uh, company in uh, Greek uh, football. And he's, among others, also the agent of the international Liverpool football player, Kostas uh, Tsimikas. Mr. Tuduris, welcome. Hello, Mr. Sambrakos. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. I'm happy to, uh, to present to the younger generation uh, some key elements uh, about the um, regarding uh, the profession of uh, sports agent, which actually seems to be a lucrative and uh, a luxurious uh, profession, but the difficulties are are huge, and uh, I'm glad that I will have the opportunity to share my experiences uh, with uh, with you and with uh, our audience. Great, we can't wait. The stage is yours. Perfect. So, are we ready to start? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so let me share the screen with the presentation. Okay, all right. So uh, we'll discuss about the role of an agent in the professional uh, football. Actually, I'm planning to, to have 10-15 um, uh, minutes maximum of uh, presentation and then uh, some uh, discussion and some questions from uh, Mr. Sabrakos, which will come from the audience, which we will be happy to, uh, to answer. So um, let's 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 start with some uh, points here uh, about our agenda. Uh, first of all, I will make a quick introduction about uh, our company, Prosper International. Then we will move um, to the part of um, how you can become an agent. Do you need a license? What was the historical background? How it all started uh, from uh, FIFA? The regulation. Obviously, we will discuss about the skills, uh, the qualification, and some conflict of interest, the qualifications that you need to go. Is there any university that you can study this profession or you can prepare yourself to become a successful agent? And then we will discuss also the FIFA new agent regulation. This is, this is something that is not published yet. We've got some uh, internal uh, information and communication with uh, other uh, agents and with the uh, agency committee, the International Agency Committee, that are representing the majority of um, agents around the world in those discussions with FIFA in order to, um, uh, to get to the, to the finalities of, uh, of the new regulations, which will um, enter into force later this year. We expect in the, in the last uh, part of the year. And then obviously, what's the role of an agent in modern football? And then uh, we will finish with some highlights uh, of uh, some database that I've collected uh, to share with you uh, with record transfers, commissions earned, the nice part of, of, of the business and uh, the questions uh, that uh, I will uh, answer your questions. Okay, so I'll move to, uh, to the presentation. Okay, as uh, Vasily said earlier, obviously our highlight is uh, the transfer of Costas Tsimikas. Obviously, when, when you do um, a profession for 20 years, you are, you are more than happy uh, to experience those moments that really are moments that are unforgettable in your whole life. And uh, trust me, guys, it's not about the money. It's not about the, uh, the glory uh, that you're going to get. It's about the recognition of your work. And um, especially when for a specific deal, you're working hard for six or seven years and you're building a strategy out of it, uh, for it to, make it, to make it work. Obviously, the player is always the, uh, the one who leads the road. But, you know, when, you, when, you, when he has got a good uh, supporting staff around him, we give him uh, the best possibility to succeed. So that was the highlight. Uh, we, uh, the company was founded in 2002. And uh, we are trying, uh, as we will discuss later, uh, to provide holistic services related to the sports industries. 
Uh, we have our headquarters, headquarters in Athens. Uh, we've got some satellite uh, offices, small uh, accounting mainly structures in Germany and Belgium, which are two of the markets that we truly believed over the years uh, that are very useful and very well um, connected with uh, the Greek market. Uh, there was a good reputation of Greek players, especially in the Belgian market, and we've been working this market for, for several years. Uh, in total, we are involved uh, in more than 350 placements of footballers' deals, renewal of contracts over the years in 30 different countries, which allows us to gain experience, which allows us uh, to try and understand the differences in culture, the differences in law, the differences in taxation, uh, the differences of people that you are dealing with. So uh, that's a part of the experience that, you know, also invaluable. So uh, as, as we write here, a team that never settles, uh, we are a team, we are a team of people that uh, never settles. The company, uh, we are expanding the services uh, to personal branding, social media management, obviously, content production, and of course, preparing uh, the exciting world of Web3. I will add education, I will add a lot of other aspects uh, that uh, we are working on. Unfortunately, it's only 24 hours per day, so we don't have much time about to, to do everything, but we are working hard uh, to be able to, to follow the flow and to, um, to follow the new technologies and take advantage of it and use. All right, so let's start with the question, how can I become an agent? And uh, we're gonna we're gonna see a historical background of it. Okay, so let's start when the real part of agents started. It was during, uh, the years are uh, an estimate, right? Don't, it's not exact uh, years, it's not exact dates. So in, the mid 90s, it was the first period of time that the agents uh, took over, let's say, uh, the careers of footballers in European football. Uh, those days, in order to get a license, you, in order to, to become an agent, you needed to have a license, uh, which was um, uh, you needed to deposit a bank guarantee uh, of the amount of uh, 4,000 Swiss francs. Approximately that those days, it was uh, one, uh, it was pegged to the US dollar. So it was like more or less 40,000 US dollars. And that was it. With 40,000 Swiss francs, you got, you, you could be able to have um, a license. Those days, it was quite a lot of money, uh, I must say. Um, I was still in the university at that time. So I was lucky not to have to, to pay this amount to get, uh, to get my license. There were no restrictions in fees and in representation contracts. So in other words, you could uh, sign a player uh, to represent a player for 10 years. And just give you an example, because now it's, it's only restricted to two. So you could ask any fees, any commission fees, no, no, no restrictions. And it was like, uh, like that. And that was the beginning. And that was uh, what made this profession quite interesting for a lot of outsiders of the industry. So then I have to move a bit faster, I think, because it's already 10 minutes. So then in 2000, uh, we started to have some exams. And that was the part that I started. I took my license in 2000, um, in June in 2000. Uh, so I had to, to take a test uh, with a multiple choice test by the local federation. I went to the Greek federation. There was no expiry date of uh, my license. Um, the commission fee was still open. It was negotiable. Uh, we had to represent the player for maximum two years and there was no restriction of minors. So in other words, you could, you could represent a kid which was like 12 years old, 14 years old, 16 years old, no problems uh, whatsoever. The problems were that uh, during this time, FIFA had to deal with a lot of uh, conflict uh, with, and a lot of cases that went to, um, to the legal side uh, with a lot of agents. So that was the reason that in 2015, FIFA said, okay, I've had enough. I'm out of the uh, agent's business. You are not called anymore FIFA agent. All the previous licenses are recalled. We don't need to, um, you don't need to take any exams at the moment. You just need 
uh, to go to your local federation and each federation implements its own regulations based obviously on some recommendations that are coming from FIFA. So there was again, no license. Um, you just needed to provide one annual professional liability insurance like many other professions. Uh, obviously uh, you needed a clear criminal record uh, per year and then a small fee to register. And then you, ha you have until today, you are obliged to register to every federation that you are making a transfer. So for example, if you make a transfer in the Bundesliga, you have to register with the German Football Federation. If you have to make a, regardless, if you are registered in another um, federation, you have to be registered in several federations in wherever you are involved in a deal. They did it to control, um, to control the market there because all the transactions are going to the transfer matching system, which is the TMS, probably whoever is involved in, in, in football, in the football industry is obviously aware of it. Uh, so TMS is, um, is an online system which uh, every club that finalizes a transfer have, has to submit uh, to FIFA and to UEFA, which is like the transfer fee that you pay for a player, the, the contract itself, you uploaded it, and then you have to, to add all the fees, including the commission. So they start now to have a better understanding and a better view of the financial part of the market. Um, unfortunately, this brought some um, unpleasant uh, events uh, because several non-professional, uh, let's say, let's put it this way, non-professional, non-specialized uh, special, people uh, entered the market. Because remember, the only uh, obligation for you is to get a clear criminal record and um, an annual professional liability. So anyone could do it. Whatever, whatever you did before, you can become an agent suddenly. So imagine when there were a lot of fees involved, how many outsiders of this industry joined and uh, create damage to the players, to the market. And that's how, why now, uh, as we discussed earlier, FIFA is bringing up new regulations. So there will be exams again, more difficult than uh, the previous time, and it will be annual examination. So that's good because you have to, to continue uh, developing and uh, learning and uh, keeping track of, of the new rules. Um, obviously the criminal records, there will be a cap uh, for the commission that uh, the agent is able to negotiate, which is something that we don't want, obviously. That's why we are negotiating on it. But okay, we will, we will, we will see. This is still pending for every player's or club's agent. Now it's a good, it's a good time to, to explain. There are only, there are not only players' agents. There are also clubs' agents. For example, a club can hire an intermediary or an agent in order to, to finalize a contract on their behalf. So in other words, I want to sell Chimikas, for example, from Liverpool to a third club. Okay, let's say to Manchester City. Okay, so I, I trust one agent. I, I don't trust or I don't know or I prefer to do the business with my own agent. Okay, I mandate another person who is not related to the player and he's concluding the deal uh, for me or he's trying to approach the clubs uh, to, to bring offers to my club. So, and the, another key element of the new regulations has to do with the extra protection for minors. Some federations have already implemented some um, uh, regulations, very strict regulations. One of those is the FA about the minors, uh, but it's not generalized. So right now you will have to have extra courses to be able to participate, to, to take extra exams also, to be able to represent um, minors. And now we, we have also a discussion about the definition of minor. Um, who is a minor? A minor, the definition that FIFA wants to, to, uh, to use is the player who is 
only eligible to sign a contract six months earlier before this date. So in other words, if you are eligible to sign a contract when you are 16 years old, you are minor if you are 15 and a half and younger. Okay, so that's a brief discussion about it. And then let's, let's go to move subject, uh, which also has to do a bit with, uh, with uh, the regulations since 2015 and what brought, what kind of people came into the, the industry. Let's see the professional background of the agents today. Okay, that's a brief estimate. So we have lawyers, we have ex-lawyers or lawyers, journalists, ex-journalist, which in my understanding, it's logical because you are, you are close to the industry or you, you understand it. Ex-footballers as well, businessmen and managerial professionals, restaurant owners, which is very famous. Actually, the, the most famous agent was not even an owner. He was working in a restaurant, Mino Raiola. I, I guess everyone has heard his name and his success. Family members and tax advisors. My brother is my agent. My cousin is my agent. Adventurers, the people that are, want, want to make some quick money, that the previous regulations of FIFA allowed this to happen. And the funny part, everyone for Turkey, North Africa, Nigeria, and recently Greece. So in other words, wherever I go, I see agents from Turkey, from North Africa, and from Nigeria, uh, especially in, um, in, in the central part of Europe, Belgium and Germany. There is so many, so many people, there are so many people from from Turkey and North Africa who are, uh, who are dealing. I'm, I'm sure, I'm very sure that actually the agents from Turkey are much, 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 much more than uh, the football players of any levels uh, of the Turkish football players. So this is the professional background of the agents today. Now let's move forward. Okay, the education. Now this is the part that I think uh, would be very interesting for you guys because you are studying at the moment. So you, you are uh, probably wondering uh, how uh, can I join this profession? How can I become an agent? Um, what course could help me? So FIFA, um, they, 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 they started to have some international universities around the world. FIFA also has some uh, of, their, of its own uh, programs. There are, as I said, some international universities around the world that they have very interesting courses uh, or even uh, masters uh, or bachelor degrees that could help. Uh, there are some other independent institutions. And recently, some large football clubs like Real Madrid uh, are offering you know, some valuable courses uh, for you to get some knowledge. Some of the courses that here, it's the sports management, obviously, football business, international sports law and practice, which is something that I, uh, I had also. FIFA Diploma in Club Management, Sports Science, UEFA Certificate in Football Management, FIFA Executive Program in Football Agency. Visit the FIFA and UEFA website. It's a good start. You can see their programs. Definitely, definitely, we are in a much better position than we used to be some years ago. There is progress. And um, because the industry is huge, uh, definitely there will be much better uh, outcome over the next years. Okay, and then we have some, the role of an agent. Okay, I, I added some points that could be helpful uh, to, to, to see, for example, how an agent can be successful. Obviously, um, it's a complicated uh, profession. You have to be dealing with several uh, different uh, problems every day and aspects of the life of a professional footballer inside the pitch and outside the pitch and with clubs and with industry and with media and with so many things, so many issues around you. But I tried to, to, to put some bullet points uh, of the major um, actions, let's say you should, you should take. Always protect the interest of your client. That's a key element. Understand the football industry. You cannot just become a football agent without understanding football itself but also the financial ecosystem around football. So the ecosystem is like the, the most important thing that you need to learn. That's why you have to do the studies that, that we, uh, we discussed. The principles of a client representation, which has to do with negotiation skills. There are some good courses about negotiation, which I, I, I checked uh, earlier. 
Obviously, you need always to follow the FIFA rules and regulations, which are changing, ongoing changes. Uh, so you need to be educated about it. You need to build an international network. Nowadays, the market is global. You don't have to, you cannot deal only with one country or other country. It's over. If you, if you, minim, you, you are minimizing the opportunities and the options that your players might have, you have to have, as I said before, skills in negotiation. You have uh, to know definitely a few foreign languages. The more, the better, because I realized that when, when you speak uh, to a person and especially somebody that doesn't, uh, is not able to speak in English, um, to speak English language, when you speak to a person, his own language, I think he feels closer to you. I think, especially if you know how to joke in his language or how to, to break the ice in, in discussions, he, he feels closer. He feels that you're part of his culture. And especially when you're a foreign agent, it helps. But obviously, you cannot learn 20 languages. So just try, try the basics. Um, OK, then we have uh, the, the taxation and legal system in different countries. Oh, this is, this is crazy. Uh, this is a labyrinth. They, like, you, you really have if you don't want to hire a lawyer in each country or to pay an accountant in each country, obviously you need to study and you need to learn and, and you gain this, this by experience over the years. The taxation system is different in Greece, different even in, in the EU, it's totally different. And there are ways um, to, uh, to help your client. So basically, especially for the taxation side, it's good to, to work with um, uh, some uh, companies that are accounting companies in the country of, 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 of where the player plays. But ge generally speaking, you need to understand the differences because it will help you in the negotiation. So the net contract is the money that the player gets in his pocket. The gross contract is the money that is written in the contract. So it's, 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 uh, it's, there are so many <laughs> experiences in the past that the player was looking at the contract and saying, whoa, I'm getting one million. And then suddenly he was receiving half a million in his bank account. So they said, okay, what's wrong? It may sound funny to you, but there are registered intermediaries that have done those mistakes recently with top professional international footballers. So you have to know the market and the laws. Obviously you have to, uh, to promote the players, especially in Greece, uh, we are a very poor country in that area, and uh, especially regarding the football uh, footballers and um, the general football industry. Unfortunately, we need to get more attraction of the game um, and more transparency. The transparency will bring more sponsors. Obviously, the social media, how many players you, know, you follow uh, and you see their actions and, uh, in the social media, this is part of a marketing strategy. Career and post-career planning, this is my favorite, the dual career, probably because some of the players that I started with are now already veterans. So now I'm, I'm, I'm getting uh, used to, to listen to their own problems because not everyone is a millionaire. Not everyone is a millionaire. What is a footballer like? Footballer doesn't have the life that you, you have. At this age, he's, he's working and he's training. He doesn't have time to go to the university. He travels he has different issues to deal with, regardless the amounts that he is receiving. So he doesn't have time to study, to educate himself. So there are several programs that we will support. We'll make some campaigns. I already spoke with the Minister of um, Sports in Greece to, to have some type of extra programs to support the veterans. And then obviously, if you want to build a, a successful organization, you need good associates, good partners, good, good people around you, loyal, hardworking and capable to understand the market and the philosophy of the business and the philosophy of the company. That is, that, is, that is for me something very important, the philosophy of the company. I've been working 20 years and the people that have been around are not so many. I never wanted to bring to the company another agent who worked for many years and came over to bring his agenda and let's grow together. No, I always preferred slower steps but safe steps, you build the personnel, you learn, you teach them how to, to adapt in the industry. And trust me, after that, you have, you have the best results. So that's why only young people now, from now on again. Okay, now some 
interesting facts. Okay. All right. There are more than 25,000 agents worldwide. It's, it's a huge amount. It's a huge number. There are 15 degrees, but only 30% of those are registered. Actually, maybe 50 is wrong. I don't know why I wrote 50. Probably I wanted to write 500 and one zero was taken out. But, but yes. Mino Raiola, as we discussed before, earned 22 million euros commission for completing the transfer of Paul Pogba to Manchester United. That's the reason that FIFA gets crazy and now they want to implement new regulations for the fees. 22 million, not bad. Pini Zahavi earned 12 million commission for brokering the transfer of Neymar to PSG. So in other words, what I want to say, the transfer of Neymar was 222 million and Zahavi earned 12 million. The transfer of Pogba was 110 million and Rayola earned 22 million. Open negotiation, free economy. All right. So, and that we, FIFA and the CAS and the Court of Arbitration uh, dealt with more than 5,000 cases involving agent disputes uh, over the past years. And that was the reason of uh, the decision uh, of FIFA of 2015 to get out of agents. But still, there are a lot of cases. At least now there is um, a better and faster resolution of these cases. And now some charts. You can see the market size. Okay, because maybe you heard a lot of negative uh, negativities about the, the profession so far. So let's go to some positive numbers. The market size of the European uh, professional football market uh, growing from uh, 2006 to 2020, which is uh, the date that we have the last information. So you can see the growth, obviously. We are talking about uh, 28, 29 billion euros. There is a small decrease last year due to uh, COVID, but now we are back growing. The same, you can see the revenues of um, the biggest five European soccer leagues clubs from the same period of, from earlier, actually, from 1996, you see the growth. Obviously, England is, uh, has the biggest growth of all. Uh, and you see the gap, like you, you can see in 2010, there was like the, all of those five were very close. But then you see after 2010, when the increase of the TV rights uh, in, in England gave them the boost and the new um, ownerships from uh, abroad, the billionaires that joined the clubs. You can see the, the huge now difference between England and the rest of the countries of the top five. Better not, not put the Greek uh, chart there. Okay. And then we have the transfer fee spending uh, from the Premier League clubs. You can see we're talking about huge money, huge money. We're talking about 2.12 billion euros for every transfer year. So in other words, every transfer period, like January and um, summer, we have 2 billion euros transfer fee, guys, eh? transfer fees. Transfer fees are not fees that are paid to the players. Transfer fees are fees that are paid from one club to another. So if you add the players and the commissions, you get there. Some top transfer fees paid for the players. And because I see the time, it's gone. And then the most interesting part, Okay, let's see the average annual salary for the players. You can see um, the, that, for example, um, Manchester City, Manchester United, you see the amounts of million US dollars that they play average. So in other words, it's average 8.7 million dollars, the income of a player of Manchester City uh, per year. Gross, eh? And then the nicest part, and that's how we, we end the presentation. The FIFA agent fees. So you can see there is a growth to, the, to, the, to the, this industry, which is quite nice to see. And then you see in 2014, from 2014 to 2019, it's three times more, triple the money of commissions, a lot of money. That's why FIFA wants to, to put a, a cap. I'm supporting this depending on the amount, but definitely there have to be a regulation so that um, because, you know, we, we don't want to squeeze the industry, we want to help the industry grow. And if agents become um, uh, liabilities in, uh, in the industry, then it's not good for the whole market. I hope I, I, I covered a lot of it. I just had half an hour. So, Mr. Sabrakos, I'm all yours. Pascal, uh, thank you very much for uh, this presentation. I think that you couldn't say more 
uh, in those 20, 25 minutes. As someone who is uh, in, the, in football business for more than three decades, I, I can say that I'm, uh, how can I say, um, it, it's a, a, a huge surprise for me that someone can tell that much for this business in uh, that short uh, time. So Thank many you. questions, as you could imagine. Yes. So let's start. Um, could you please describe the schedule on a transfer deadline day for you as an agent? Ooh. <laughs> All right. I must tell you that because I'm very, uh, from, from, my, from my nature, I'm very organized. I want to finish earlier. And some years I was on holidays during this period and I felt really bad. But you know, when, uh, when I grew up a bit, I said, no, you're not going to go again. Even if you don't have something to do, you have to show that you are busy. But generally speaking, it's a fantastic experience. Um, you are receiving phone calls. Uh, 90% of the calls that you receive, 99% is not going to happen. But there were some exciting deals that I've done in the past in the last day. It's a crazy day, especially not only for agents, definitely, but for the club uh, management and you know the people that are working in the clubs. They, they are really in a crazy situation and they need holidays immediately after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure about that. Uh, so, uh, uh, describe, please, the story of the toughest negotiation you ever had. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have to go back. I have to go back uh, 10, 15 years. There was, and, and actually, I don't know how we how it worked, we, we, we had the transfer, I had the transfer from um, Red Star Belgrade to Twente uh, from, um, from a club that was sold, like to Red Star, the club was sold from a South African club, let's say Ajax Cape Town for the sake of the conversation. So we, we Ajax Cape Town sold the player to Red Star Belgrade, okay? So after one year, we had to make legal actions um, uh, to, the, to Red Star because they didn't pay the player. And we had to move the player to FC Twente. It was the year that they won the, the league in um, in Netherlands. I think it was 2010 or 2009. Um, okay. Normally, the club, the Red Star is responsible to pay the fee to the club, regardless the player. The player, since there was a club-to-club -club agreement with the, the, in South Africa, the player was really free. So then you have to you have to really go uh, against your your um, the, the South African club, but. The club in South Africa claimed that since the player left from Red Star, the player had to belong back to them. And actually, there was a FIFA fast, quick decision, not decision, pre-decision, um, that they give the right to the club. So then we had to negotiate with this club and with Red Star. So we had to, do, to negotiate with two clubs for the player to go to FC Twente. It was tough because I had to travel to South Africa twice. It was tough because I had to, to deal with different people that had different interests. Imagine a Serbian and a South African owner uh, with a, a partner in Sweden and a, a Dutch owner of the club that really wanted the player and they couldn't wait to get him. So it was successful. It was one of the most difficult because it has also legal aspects, negotiations. But, you know, we don't, we don't have time to explain more. I wish I can... I can I can take advice from uh, Vasilis to write a book in the future about it because yeah, he, yeah. he knows where how to do it. <laughs> Maybe an encyclopedia, not only a book. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. It's true. So, how do you discover a player? Someone asks. How? Uh, which are the main steps someone has to to do in order to make a setup uh, for this procedure? Okay, depending on the, on, the, on, the, on the status that you've got in the industry, imagine if you start immediately, you have to do another, but I will just speak generally. I don't want to, to make it so uh, detailed. All right, generally, you have to watch football games. You have to, to, to see the youth. The youth is the target of the majority of the agents because the youth, it's easier to sell potential. If you sell potential, it's easier part because... Then the potential to, to get to the, to, to, to uh, if, you, if you try to sell the potential, you are always successful. So yes, you see the youth, you learn, you read the newspaper, you read the news around, around the world, you, 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 you check the results, you create a network of people that you trust, coaches, assistant managers around the area that you want to, to control and check. Uh, then you have to, to speak to the boy. 
And if it's young, obviously you speak to the family and then you need to, to, to present a strategy. You need to present a plan. You need to present um, a plan for their son, a son's growth in the industry and why he must trust you to represent him uh, in the future. That's the main, let's say, aspects, like, like the, the key areas that you need to, uh, to look at in order to, uh, to try and bring the best players. Obviously, the easy part is to go to the, to the young international groups but it's, it's, it's sometimes, especially for younger agents, it's too late because all these kids are already with somebody else, with somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another question is um, about the first steps someone has to make in order to, to create a network. Okay. Internet helps us. When I started internet was in the first steps, it was baby step internet. So actually, uh, obviously, uh, new technologies, yes, are very helpful. You need to travel. You need to travel a lot. You need to, to, to participate in some, um, let's say, uh, events that are happening in several parts of, uh, of the world about it. Obviously, during the courses that you're going to follow in the universities, that there will be a network that you can start with, if, especially if you go to FIFA and uh, UEFA. You need to travel, you need to send emails, you need to, 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 to check the industry, like every other business. You just need to be on it 24-7. Okay, last question, uh, because it, it comes from a woman. Have you yes. ever met a woman uh, who was an, a player's agent? Is it tough for women uh, to do this job? I, I'm not sure if there is uh, anyone in Greece, but yes, I've met several, uh, several ones. Yes, it's a tough business because you have to deal with, in a man's world, you have to be tough. But I had always the belief since, uh, since 25, like, like 25, like 15, 20 years, that honestly, if a woman does this business, she will be better than any one of us because they know how to negotiate, they know how to control people, they know how to manipulate with a good meaning of the word, if there is a good meaning of the word, uh, around, you know, like the market and the people. But generally speaking, yes, there are women and there must be more women because they will bring more transparency because honestly, uh, I believe that um, uh, if, if women enter this industry, they will make it more difficult for us to, uh, to compete and uh, we will get uh, better and better every year. Okay. Uh, I have to, uh, to give you an another one. This is the last one, I, I promise. But, no, uh, no problem. Uh, great. Um, when describing the role of, the, of an agent, uh, you, you have mentioned uh, a number of hard and skills. Uh, sorry, sorry, Vasil. Younger, how can I say? I have to work. Can you hear me now, Now, yes. Please repeat the whole Can question you hear me because now? The, 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 the connection was bad from the beginning. And it is bad, actually. Great. When you describe the, the role of NATO, is it okay now? Just give, it, just give it a few seconds. Maybe I can hear you, but when you start and then, okay, now I think it's stable. Okay. Uh, uh, someone asks from you uh, to mention the most crucial skills a young professional has to have in order to, to find his way uh, in this profession. Hard work, discipline, and always, as I said before, always to be there for the, to support the interest of your client. You, it's not about you anymore. You have to take out your ego. You have to be focused that you are representing the interest of a third party. And, um, and especially uh, for, for these guys, for the professional footballers that, you know, their career is only 10, 15 years maximum. Uh, every mistake could damage uh, their lives. So, you know, our role is very crucial. That's why we have to be very well educated before we join uh, this industry. And we have to respect our um, clients, uh, which, you know, as I said, the careers is very small uh, in a period of time. So we have, we, that's the major characteristic that I think you have. Obviously all the others are similar to other businesses, but 
You have to take out your ego. That's the most important. Yeah. Pascal, thank you very much. It was, how can I say, enlightening, insightful. Uh, I think that our audience, the, the youngers, uh, are very lucky uh, because I think today they gain a lot uh, from this presentation. Thank you very much, Vasilis. Unfortunately, I didn't have a, a vision a contact like with, uh, with, the, with, the, with the audience, visual contact with the audience. And it was quite uh, strange, but I'm very glad that you were uh, uh, in charge of this uh, conversation. And uh, I'm happy to see you today. And I'm happy that uh, we covered a lot, that I believe that we covered a lot of uh, interesting parts of the job of football agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot. Uh, we couldn't do, you couldn't do more. Uh, 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 in that time. Uh, I'm sure about that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, everyone.